Hong Kong now in the situation that they want to be in. The United States kind of in uh, almost what I would say for them is probably an expected outcome, especially with how Hong Kong has looked on their own picks. I can't imagine that they wouldn't have expected to not win Hong Kong's picks. So I think what they need to do is steal themselves. And there it is, the Nomad 5. They're going in for it. They're going in for the reading. And this is honestly a good pick in my mind after seeing what happened on air. Yeah, I think between this and the two remaining hiddens, I think this was definitely the better option to go. But uh, I also feel at the same time that all bets are kind of off when you get to this stage. When you're on map number 12 of the best of 13, it starts to be a little less about what's a good pick and it starts to be a little more about just who's feeling the best and who has the most left in the tank. Because you've been playing for a long time and you've got a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on you. And those little things can really kind of add up once you get this deep. And man, oh man, we're about as deep as it gets into a match like this. But United States, as you said, won the free mod three. So they're gonna pick another reading, low AR challenge. And they're gonna say, we're gonna do it again. And we're gonna force tiebreaker with this. Sposhy fiery trail. MCY4, Suwagi, and what I assume will maybe be either RLSC or Shirai Yuki. I don't think F2X is generally a reading player, but I could be wrong. But this is... This is a crazy scenario. This is quite literally the United States' last opportunity to get their chance to get a foothold on Tiebreaker here. Otherwise... The reigning champions will move on to grand finals if this does not go the way of the picking team. But we're looking for potential tiebreaker here. What even happens if we go tiebreaker? Who does mechanics on either side here? What's happening right now? Uh, There's so much to be said in such a yeah. short amount of time. And it is Shirat Hayuki. I don't even want to think about what would happen on a tiebreaker because we've still got to get there. We've got to you get know? there. Two minutes and 30 seconds of reading. Yeah, United States has to win this before we can even start thinking about it, and Hong Kong would like nothing more than to take this break point to close the match out and not even, not have to worry about the tiebreaker, not have to think about the ridiculous difficulty that is that tiebreaker. I don't blame them. And, and we're going to go right in. Bashi Tito Fiery, MC4, Suwagi, Shira Hayuki, those have been the core for Hong Kong. They've been the reason that they are in this position with this match point on their side. Ooh, Suwagi looked really good against Bashi on the easy earlier, but in the end, Bashi was the one to come out on top, and I wonder if that maybe says something about those two as reading players in here. MCY4, a great player in terms of the aim stuff, and Shiraha Yuki as well, but it leaves so much between Bashi and Fiery versus Suwagi and MCY4 right now. You've got two of the best United States gimmick tournament players going up against two of Hong Kong's best right now. And it's going to be the difference right now between Takedo and Shiraha Yuki. Yeah, and I don't think it'll stay that way for long, though. This map is so challenging that you're not going to see players holding forever. There is the break from Shiraha Yuki, though, that will give the advantage back over to the United States. But you've got the Bashi Fiery 2v2 with MCY4 and Suwagi, all of whom are looking comfortable. There goes Takedo again. So those third players kind of getting third playered here. Shahayuki and Takedo both having trouble. There goes MCY4, and there goes Bashi made to trade it back, though. Neither team able to take any sort of advantage. And now it's Suwagi versus Fiery Rage. I would say Suwagi's been a little better this match, but Fiery Rage, never a player you're able to count out. And the breaks go back and forth between the third players, Takedo and Shirayuki, just trading misses. But the United States have gained somehow just a little bit of a foothold by about 50, oh no. 60,000 points. Those are some misses. There goes, oh, there goes Shirayuki. But it's just Fiery versus Suwagi, right? Like, it's just this 1v1 because the score is so close that if one of these players breaks, it could be all over instantly. Fiery Rage, can he do it? The player who has won OWC the most times of anyone in the yeah, world. He's doing it. And he's going to hold it. He hits that ridiculous wiggle pattern. Suwagi breaks on it. Bashi holds as well. And, uh, well, I think we can maybe start to hear some Ikaruga next and a little bit of Kagetora oh. in the background. Oh, because that's so we it. have a tiebreaker on its way in just a few moments. United States with a 400,000 point lead. They're going to clutch out the Snow Mod 5 last pick to force the tiebreaker. Fiery Rage is going off. 
A man on a mission. Is he gonna hit the triangle soon? No, he does not, oh, unfortunately. Wow. But Bashi does. But Jeez. Bashi does. <laughs> and he hits the little wiggle W's because of course he does. What a play from both of those members of the United States. Bashi hitting everything that Fiery Rage didn't. Fiery Rage holding out when Bashi Man couldn't. The United States have each other's backs. They have the pick, they have the point, and they have the tiebreaker. We are at six all here in the loser's bracket final. That is it again. The United States, they've got two of the best reading tournament players that this country has seen in a very long time on the same roster when it's almost tiebreaker time. You better bet they're going to buckle down and get some combo and Fiery Rage putting the work in just like he did on that Nomad 3 earlier, exactly when his team needs him most. And Boshi with that backing score, absolutely fantastic. Now we go to tiebreaker, we go mechanics, we go hard style, we go the hardest map in the pool. Four minutes and 39 seconds, 200 BPM, but 7.8 stars. Mind you, not the longest map in the pool, nor is this long by tiebreaker standards by any means, which means the stakes are raised. 